Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more minutes uh, for everybody to start up. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me well um, and see my screen. Uh, let me know if you can't. Um, we'll use the chat window and the live Q&A on the right, so I can follow up uh, with any issues or questions uh, that you might have at this point. Uh, so let me know uh, who all have joined. Uh, just drop your name. Uh, we'll be happy to have a chat with you.
Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, it's about 7.05, uh, so let's uh, kick off our session. Um, first of all, thank you for taking time this evening uh, to join up. I hope all of you are kind of keeping safe. Uh, so at this point, you know, we wanted to kind of do our uh, more like hands-on session, if possible, on serverless uh, computing with Azure Functions. Uh, just wanted to do a quick check on people who are attending today's session. Uh, is anybody planning to do uh, hands-on so that uh, uh, we will kind of follow up through? I uh, just wanted to kind of let you know. If you have any questions or any comments, uh, you can write on the chat uh, with the live q and I'll follow up. Uh, as I as we kind of start to make along, and then um, I guess we'll work out from there. All right, uh, let's get going. Um, I just wanted to kind of uh, do like a quick uh, run through of uh, some questions that we have for our future sessions. Uh, just wanted to see what the interest levels are for each one um, so that accordingly, you know, I can set up the uh, forthcoming sessions. Uh, so the first one uh, that I have, uh, you can post your questions, either use chat or that, uh, live Q&A. Uh, should I use Teams or Twitch or YouTube? Uh, either one of them is suitable. Uh, Teams just is a little bit cumbersome at times uh, because you need an app uh, and web sometimes is not very clean. Uh, so what do you guys prefer? Do you want to do Teams or we can do Twitch or even YouTube? All right, and then uh, as we kind of get this out, um, anything that you guys want to do on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, or um, should we just meet up on a monthly basis? And again, then what focus areas uh, that you guys want to do on? Should it be more cognitive services, uh, like the one that we are doing today, uh, machine learning or deep learning? What, what would be your choices? All right, uh, so let's get started with our session. Um, so what, before we kind of jump into what is Azure uh, or you know how do we kind of make use of Azure functions, let's spend some time on understanding what Azure functions are. Uh, basically Azure functions, like the name it says, functions uh, allow you to run small pieces of code. 
uh, without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. So once you have uh, this function ready, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, how's your server going to scale up? How are you going to manage the request? How many requests you are handled? Uh, basically, that's all being managed uh, by the Azure uh, infrastructure itself. Uh, so this becomes very good because if you have uh, a peak load uh, coming in, uh, the times of which you don't know, uh, so there's no way you can over provision or under provision it, right? It will keep on scaling, uh, scaling up or scaling down depending on what the loads are, what the traffics are, and then you are essentially charged for how much time your, your functions were running. So anytime your function was idle, essentially you don't get charged for it. So, so it gives you a pretty good uh, flexibility in terms of how you want to run this code. Uh, and this concept is not very new. Uh, this was already there uh, in the app services. It was called web jobs. Uh, so you could trigger a web job um, and, and run whatever jobs that you wanted to do. It had a bunch of triggers. So the same concept gets applied on Azure function itself. Uh, so it, it brings in a lot of power uh, and a lot of flexibility to what you can do. And then essentially with the help of triggers, which means that, okay, you know, how should the function run? Uh, you have a lot of uh, plug and play modules that you can do with. In our today's session, uh, we will kind of do it as an HTTP request. Uh, but then again, you can do, uh, you know, blob uh, a file if it's posted on a blob or a stream request or any of those things that are there available on Azure. So depending on what your needs are, you can create a functions uh, that that's suitable for that need. Now, you know, it's very easy to dismiss that, hey, you know, why is this useful? You know, I have a bunch of APIs. Uh, why, why do you even need Azure functions? Uh, and I kind of share some of the stories uh, from uh, my implementations uh, at Property Guru. Uh, so we use, uh, a version of functions across uh, almost all the three cloud vendors. Uh, and that has given us a kind of a unique perspective to understand, uh, you know, what are the pros and cons or benefits of some of these things are. Uh, so let me start off with an example. So I'm sure most of you know about Property Guru at this point. Um, basically, we are a property portal uh, covering Southeast Asia. Uh, and for us, uh, we are in uh, a few markets uh, besides Singapore, so Thailand, uh, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Now, at least last year, if you go on our portal, uh, what you would see is that you know there will be less of the property itself, uh, and there is more call to actions or the faces of the agents on the website itself, right? So you don't know much about the property itself. Uh, but you have to focus mainly around, uh, you know, what the agent is doing. You know, there'll be, hey, say, call me. You know, they won't share much, a uh, lot of details around the photos itself. So that made it for a very bad consumer experience. Uh, so this was something that, you know, we essentially kind of built a model um, which detected whether there's a face, are you putting in text, are you putting in phone numbers? Uh, is the photo of a property or something else. Uh, and that was very important. So we went from an image that you saw something on your right hand side uh, to the next one that we have, uh, which is much more cleaner website. Now, now it's much focused on the property itself uh, rather than working through and saying that, hey, you know, look at this thing, call me. Uh, you even have sliders on your pictures itself. So you are able to browse it while you are kind of working through. So this was not present uh, until recently. Uh, and this is where you know we had uh, created this model. And one approach for us was the fact that, hey, you we could deploy this model as APIs, uh, you know, run a bunch of GPUs on it, uh, and and you know deploy this uh, on our front end for the agent itself. Uh, but we thought otherwise, right? So now the way we have it is. All of these are deployed as functions. Uh, some of these are on the competitors platform, uh, but now just purely with functions, right? I have a capability to process 10,000 images per second. Although though my concurrency is very, very high, um, we are able to kind of live within the constraints uh, that's given by the uh, by the functions itself uh, and you know still get a decent throughput. Although each image takes a lot of time to process, uh, it takes a few milliseconds to do it, uh, but when you have thousands of these images going together, 
uh, you know, it feels like the whole system is working extremely fast. So that's a that's a big advantage over uh, over some of these things. Uh, some of the other things that we ended up doing is, you know, there are limitations on the memory uh, CPU size. So if you work with any computer vision models, uh, it almost makes it impossible to kind of deploy it unless your models are small enough uh, uh, to be accommodated into the functions itself. So one of the techniques that we started using was using uh, model distillations which will essentially take a model which has a bunch of weights, uh, bring it down to a few hundred MB, and that essentially uh, how we ended up deploying these functions on there. Um, and, you know, it does, you know, you do take a hit on accuracies, uh, but, you know, our accuracy is if you train a very high model and because of distillation, it uses, loses a few percentage points, it's okay, but, you know, overall you're getting pretty decent accuracies in there. Now, because of this, uh, we were able to reduce the cost by almost 97%. So most of these models were deployed on our virtual machines, uh, and now we don't have to maintain these virtual machines. I have these models available on the fly, uh, or if there is any issues, we could essentially switch over almost instantaneously uh, without uh, without any hiccups. Uh, so from uh, my perspective, you know, I'm a big fan of functions. Uh, how it works. Uh, there are certain challenges to work with uh, functions, uh, but once you get a hang of it, um, you know you will absolutely love it, and the benefits that come with it are are absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I would like to take a pause and see if there are any questions uh, on the forum. So if you have any things that you would like to ask, uh, do uh, punch it along in the Q and A. I will you know periodically take a pause and work through that. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'll just pause for a couple of minutes uh, and see if anything comes up from there. I answered it. Uh, thank you, Ashik, for taking time uh, for uh, responding to the questions earlier. Uh, so there is a question. When is usage of GPUs are deemed necessary? Uh, so GPUs become useful in most of this. So there are a couple of scenarios in which you need to use. So one is, of course, training. Um, there is there is a real benefit uh, in the terms of acceleration that you would get. Uh, the other other places where you kind of uh, look at GPUs is when you want. I mean, for some of the applications, I know for a fact that 500 milliseconds is absolutely unacceptable. Um, this is this is actually a very bad performance. Uh, when you want to get kind of get to single digit or low uh, low double digits uh, milliseconds uh, responses, um, that's when you will end up using GPUs for that. Uh, but for that, you know, the cost benefit advantage has to be there. Uh, are you really going to see that amount of throughput coming in? Uh, and in certain scenarios, that's really required. Um, so in that case, kind of cases, uh, it's better to use a GPU. Um, and uh, of course, you know, the same techniques that I kind of talk about, you know, quantization, distillation, all of these things, you can still use it on a GPU uh, and, and not worry about, uh, you know, uh, the response times itself because, you know, they are they are going to kind of do it fairly, fairly fast. So, so that's another use case uh, where you would end up uh, using the GPUs.
Any other questions? All right. Um, so let's move on um, to the next one where let's get into some of the uh, the real thing itself, right? Uh, so you know, if you exclude all the waiting times uh, associated with that, you can practically train uh, a whole idea from scratch to production in a in a in a you know in five minutes. Uh, you know, and I I kind of put up the asterisk on that to say that you know there's a lot of waiting time associated with some of these things. Uh, so you have to take it with a pinch of salt, but practically it's doable uh, in there. And for this session, essentially what we are going to do, I'll run through some videos and then. Uh, you know, uh, for those who are interested in the hands on uh, can sit along uh, and we can go through the session in detail. Uh, so let's uh, kick it off. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to classify uh, two types of eagles um, in this scenario, uh, and then we will deploy that model uh, into Azure functions. You can't deploy it directly. You need to kind of make a couple of changes, but uh, those are fairly small changes and essentially you will be able to do it uh, fairly quickly. So let's get started, right? So what we are going to do is uh, just run through a quick demo. Uh, as you can see it, right? I'm going to kind of uh, create a model uh, in custom vision. I'm going to say it's a bird. Um, you can give whatever description that you're lo looking at it. Uh, I'm going to use one of the lower tiers for doing resources. Uh, and you know, it's essentially practically free uh, for us. Now, in our case, we are going to say that whether this picture is of what type of eagle. So we are going to kind of work through that um, and kind of get in there. So it's a classification problem uh, and it's a uh, it's a multi class. So you have single tag per image. Uh, so we are not going to do multi labels at that, although you can completely do it. Now in your domain itself, right? There are some of these pre trained models that are available. Uh, some of these are for general. Some of these are for food, landmarks, retail. And you have the same set of models that are compact. Uh, the difference between the two is twofold. One is uh, if you use the non compact models, uh, you have essentially are stuck with the uh, with the API that the custom vision provides you and right? you don't have any other choice in there. Uh, if you use compact, essentially it will allow you to export that model uh, to be able to be deployed anywhere you want. And in our scenario, we are going to use Azure functions for our deployment. Uh, and then you have these four platforms. At the bottom, you can see that I have my basic platforms like TensorFlow, CoreML, Onyx. Uh, last year, we had done something around CoreML, uh, but you know, probably we, if there is enough interest, we can kind of take that up. Um, and then, of course, our current session is going to be focusing on TensorFlow. So let's get started with this. Uh, any questions on this page? All right, if there are none, let's move on. Uh, our next step that we are going to do is we are going to add a bunch of images. Uh, so I have a bunch of images where I'm going to just take a bunch of images for bald eagle. Um, you know, I'll just select my test data, a uh, train data set, and I'm just going to give it saying that it's a bald eagle and I'm going to upload these files. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes to upload it, uh, but once it's done, uh, you have it ready and you can see it on the tags on your left hand side. Now, since we are doing two classes, I will do another one, which is Golden Eagle. Uh, and again, you select uh, the images, tag it as Golden Eagle, uh, and upload these files. Now, once these files are uploaded, right, uh, your work essentially is done, right? You have Bald Eagle sitting there, and all we have to do is hit the train button, uh, and you will be able to do that. So we'll do a quick training. It takes a few seconds uh, to finish it. Uh, this video is absolutely uh, not accelerated uh, and let's do a test. What's the model is trained? So I'm going to pick a one from a test uh, and you can see that it's it's correctly uh, identified this as a bald eagle instead of a golden eagle. Let's do a one more test uh, and see. Let's pick another class of golden eagle, uh, pick it up uh, and you know very with very high probability it's able to say that uh, you know it's a golden eagle. Now on that page itself, you are able to export that. You can export as a core ML or a TensorFlow that you can deploy it on Android, Onyx. Again, a lot of different places where you can deploy it. 
uh, the vision ai dev kit uh, you know i'll probably discuss this uh, at some later stage uh, but this is like an iot platform uh, where you can deploy some of these things on the edge itself uh, so we are not going to focus on any of these uh, four of them we are going to focus on docker pi uh, which has iot edge azure functions which is what we are interested in and azure ml right so i'll just hit on uh, docker pi uh, i'll pick a linux version uh, for docker it really doesn't matter uh, and once you have the files uh, you are good to go now this is how you would train uh, a very very simple uh, custom vision application right where where the azure provides you with build modules uh, where to which you can provide your custom images uh, and once that is ready essentially it gives you all your weights and your apis that you can feel free uh, to you know deploy this to any place that you would want now for our current scenario is we are going to set up uh, the azure function resource uh, and then you know write a bunch of code uh, to kind of do it now uh, as you kind of go through this 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 is just for demo purpose only uh, you know in the next part we will kind of do a hands on session uh, and i'll kind of walk you through the steps of what are what is really required uh, for you to do that so let's walk through this uh, you know how do you create azure functions so first thing is we are going to go on azure uh, you know say that okay we are going to create a new resource and for that resource i will need azure function app now i once i get a function app i'll hit create uh, you know pick a resource group where it's going to kind of do it uh, provide the instance name associated with that and say that hey my runtime stack is going to be python uh, which is of version 3.7 now you can pick the version that that you are interested in but for our application uh, you know any version beyond 3.6 should be suitable uh, so we are going to deploy this in central us i'm going to keep the os as linux uh, you know keep it as serverless tag it and do it now it takes a while for this to create uh, and deploy this app. Uh, so while this is being done, uh, let's modify our code uh, in a way that we can deploy this on Azure Functions. And you will see that uh, with just a few minor modifications, uh, you will be able to deploy um, functions, uh, uh, the custom vision function uh, that you train onto Azure Functions. All right, sorry. Uh, let me go back to the previous page. Uh, all right, so while this is being created, let's go and look at some of the code. Uh, so I have in my file, uh, the Docker file that I got, I took it, unzipped it, uh, and app and Azure ML are what is available to me together with the Docker file and readme.txt. I created an empty folder called AZF. That's the second folder uh, that you see. Uh, let me mark it out. So that's where I created this folder right now is completely empty. Uh, there is nothing in there. Um, so let's you know, add a few things in there uh, to set up our environment and get started. All right, so I'm going to go in the function. I'm going to create a virtual environment so that you know, I can keep my packages uh, and have a neater control over it. And I'll activate my function. I will also say that for this function, I need a Python runtime, which is what we did, uh, you know, while we were setting uh, it up on Azure. Uh, so that's how we are going to do it. Uh, and then essentially, I'm now I'm going to use a template uh, that comes up with saying that, hey, you know, I want to, sorry. Um, I want to kind of create a function uh, which has a name classify, and we are going to use an HTTP trigger um, to run this function. So basically I can pass a URL uh, of, uh, of a bald eagle or a golden eagle and then ask the function to classify it for me. So once this is done, uh, you know, environment is created, you know, we go in and activate uh, our code. Now our requirements file is something that we need because so that, you know, when we deploy it, we know what functions is there. So NumPy and TensorFlow are must because our code that we got from Custom Vision is a TensorFlow code, um, the 2.0 latest one. We need the Flask for the API and Pillow for uh, the image manipulation. Now, you know, when you kind of create a template, you know, it has this 
you know template created you know i really don't like it you know we'll replace this with my existing template uh, which is just saying that okay get uh, required parameters of image you know i'll do a log uh, pass that to my prediction url uh, and for now i mean this is a bad practice uh, never give allow origin start right basically you will keep it control uh, to the specific application but for our our purposes we are just going to kind of keep it allow all all right so once this is done uh, you know we will fix our code uh, line itself uh, so i have my models pb and labels file uh, now because you are running in functions and you know you need to tell where these files are you can't hold the files in your local directory so basically the code won't be able to find uh, find it uh, and we are going to essentially just work this through and say that okay replace it with just a simple script now another thing that we we'll need to do is instead of predict url uh, we just need to make sure that the code gets initialized in itself now i'm going to set it up you know load up all my requirements and essentially uh, you know all the fixes that are really needed are good to go now i'm just going to do an installation just run through uh, this fairly quickly it takes a few minutes for us to do that and once it's done uh, i am ready to deploy it on azure functions of course you can test this function locally uh, but you know we can test it to azure functions uh, so i'm going to kind of hit on azure uh, in my visual studio code uh, say that okay deploy this and then you can deploy it in a lot of different ways yeah you can deploy it as an app service you can deploy it uh, onto uh, as a, as your devops approach pipelines and there are a lot of different ways to do it we are directly going to deploy it into azure functions uh, so i'm going to pick hey you know i'm going to pick my subscription and say that hey eagles you know the one that we created before and we are going to do it uh, and once this is ready uh, all we have to do is publish it uh, anyways so now this deployment is is a pretty time consuming one uh, it will take a few minutes uh, for you to deploy that and you know i literally had to accelerate this uh, for the purposes of the demo um, and then you know once it's done uh, you are good to go right so then let's go back to azure uh, and see where this function was deployed all right so once we come back to azure we see that our deployment is complete let's go to our resource uh, and you will find that eagles that we did before uh, is there and you know we have, remember when we are initializing the function uh, we named it as classify uh, and that's what is available here now let's look at some of the code in here for python you cannot modify the code uh, in the web uh, you have to have it externally and this is the code that we wrote uh, in a, you know replaced it in our initialization file uh, so this is what we have now uh, and something that we are going to kind of make use of uh, so now let's get the function url right so i'm going to hit the function url uh, now it's going to tell me what is the unique url uh, to kind of invoke this and once it gets loaded i kind of take this code and copy it right it has my api key as well so you know be very very careful while sharing this and i have my code in here uh, and i took an image because that's a uh, uh, that's a query parameter that i kind of set it up and I'm just going to run it. Uh, and you know, once I click a send, the first time when I do it, it's going to take a few seconds because you know the function is a cold start. Uh, but subsequently, when you do it, you know, my first time it took five seconds. Uh, subsequently, when it's going to start, it's going to take uh, fewer and fewer seconds uh, to do it, right? And there is a problem uh, with that. You know, we'll talk about it when we deploy the code. Uh, but you saw that you know now we are down to about two seconds from five seconds. Right, and that's how uh, simple it is to deploy. Uh, with a, with a few seconds, you have a state-of-the-art computer vision application uh, deployed as Azure Functions. Now, I'm going to take a pause over here to see if there are any lingering questions that you might have, uh, and then uh, maybe go from there. So let me pause for a minute. If you have any questions, any doubts at this point before we get into the hands-on. Uh, Feel free to ask it now.
while we kind of just wait uh, for a couple of minutes, I just want to make sure that um, the folks who are going to be for the hands-on session, uh, do you have uh, the requirement set up? Uh, do you have the uh, images file available as well? Uh, just wanted to make sure that everything is set up so you guys can follow me uh, as we go along. Uh, again, if there are any questions around the installation uh, or that, you know, feel free to ask it now so that you know we can resolve it before we go into our hands-on. Let me just do a quick demo. So for those who are interested, um, you know, while we wait for questions, uh, you know, feel free to whip out your mobile phones uh, and test this. Uh, essentially, this is a direct link to the Azure functions that we just created. Uh, it's live, uh, so you can query it uh, and it has my uh, API key and everything as well. Uh, so you can pass in parameters and feel free to play around with it. I'll give you a, a couple of minutes to play around uh, and see if you have any questions. I'll be happy uh, to answer them uh, before we go on to the hands-on.
All right, now let's set up our project uh, just like what we did before. Um, so I'm going to you know, give it a different name. I'm going to say is it uh, Eagle. All right, and then you can give any product. You know, any project description that you want. Uh, Right. And then these are the resources that I have. So I'm I'm going to use the custom vision PG. Uh, I can create new resources as well. Um, so that remains the same. Uh, we are going to do a classification, uh, not object detection, um, and multi class, uh, which is going to be a single tag per image. Uh, so we are not going to uh, do multi label at this point, but you know it's as simple as toggling between the two. Now for us, our case. Uh, you know, our birds are not part of food, landmarks or retail, uh, so we are going to pick general uh, and we are going to keep it compact and we are just going to keep it as uh, the export capability to basic platform. Uh, probably next time we'll do the vision AI dev kit. Now let's create the project. So at this point, you know, I hope you guys are following with me. Um, again, if you get stuck, I will, you know, keep pausing on a regular interval. Uh, to see if there are any questions. Uh, if not, then uh, we will keep continuing from there. So I'm going to add a bunch of images. Uh, so I have my birds, uh, which I'm going to use for train. Now, I took the original data set and just kind of said that, hey, you know, I'm just going to focus on bald eagles uh, and golden eagles itself. Uh, but essentially, you can train as many classes as you want. Uh, there is no restriction that this needs to be uh, binary as well. So let's you know pick a bunch of bald eagles. I'm going to select all, uh, hit open, and say that this is uh, it's a bald eagle, and I'm going to upload uh, these images onto the custom vision platform. Uh, it will take a few minutes to upload. Uh, now, if the number of images or the size of images are large, it's going to take a long time. Uh, but there you have all the images uh, that we have done. Uh, now, of course, you could you know select a bunch of them, uh, re-tag them, or select them uh, and delete or untag them. Uh, but for our session, we are not going to do any of those things. Now we added bald eagle. Now let's add uh, golden eagles as well. Now I've you know separated this house into train um, so that you know we can keep our train and test uh, to be distinct. Uh, so let's upload uh, golden eagle. and upload our 87 files uh, that are associated with that. All right, uh, there we are. So now I have my eagles on the portal. I have my golden eagles. So these are my bunch of golden eagles. Uh, and then I have my bald eagles, uh, which are essentially, you know, you have this white fur on its head, white feathers on its head. Now we are going to train it, so they are quick couple of ways of training it. Either you can do a quick training or advanced training uh, where you can set up, you know, how much time uh, you want to kind of do it. Typically, a quick training is a good start, uh, especially if you don't know what your accuracy of your model is going to be. Uh, uh, so at least you can start from here. So let's start with train uh, and we'll get this going as well. Uh, now, as you will see that, you know, in a few seconds, uh, this model will be trained and available for you. Uh, and while this is going on, uh, let me pause here again uh, to see if there are any questions. Are you able to follow it or not? And you can see that you know while we are doing this, the model has been trained uh, and it's ready to be deployed. So I'll pause here for any questions or places where you have gotten stuck. Uh, I'll pause for a couple of minutes, see if you are able to follow it uh, before I continue forward.
Do you guys want me to repeat it? Um, any step or was this sufficient enough for you uh, to get going? Let me know in the Q and A section of the Teams app, um, and you know if it's required that we do this again, I'll be happy to uh, you know repeat this exercise. So to make it interesting, you know, as I shared on the meetup, uh, this thing, if you are able to follow uh, this session and you are able to demonstrate that you do it, uh, you know, I'll give you a one year license for any any tool from a JetBrains portfolio. Uh, so, so that's another in incentive for you to follow along uh, as we kind of get going uh, with this deployment. OK, so now we are done with this. So what we are going to do is if you can do an export, um, it will give you an option. You have your core ML, which is essentially iOS, TensorFlow for Android, uh, Onyx. Uh, Onyx, you can do it with a bunch of things. What we are going to use is Docker file for us. So we will pick Docker file. Uh, we are going to pick Linux and just export it. Although it says Docker file, uh, it gives you a bunch of code and a, and, and a Docker file itself uh, where you can create a Docker container. Uh, but for our purposes, we are not going to use Docker as a way of deployment to the functions. Uh, we are just going to use uh, the code that's available uh, as part of this Docker container uh, to do it. Now I have already extracted this code, so I'll just open it here and share it with you. Um, so for us, the key thing is the app itself. So you have the predict code, you have the model weights file, and you have the labels text files. Now, this text file is essentially telling which label is associated with bald eagle and golden eagle. So that's what it reads up and saying it. So if you want to change the labels uh, to something else without changing the model, you can just edit the label file uh, and you'll still be good to go. So these are the ones that we need. Uh, and of course, the requirement files will tell you you know, what are the key specific functions that we need. Now, although it says TensorFlow 1.4, we can do with TensorFlow 2.0. Uh, so I'll kind of just show you there uh, in just a moment. So for now, which we need these three files uh, and uh, that's all that we need from the code itself. Everything else uh, we are not going to use. All right, so let's get into the command line itself. Um, so. So I'm going to you know, work along on this command line. Uh, let me just uh, remove this. All right, so I have my code that is sitting in here. I'll make an empty directory, uh, which we'll call it as demo. Uh, now we'll go into the demo folder itself. Let me just make sure the font is large enough so you guys can follow. All right, now I'm I am in this folder uh, which is currently empty. Uh, there is nothing in there, uh, so let's create our virtual environment for now. So we will create a virtual environment. Uh, it's the standard command of creating virtual environment. Uh, so give it a couple of minutes uh, and this should get activated itself. Now my code is done. Uh, my environment is set up. Now let's make sure that we activate our 
environment. Now my environment is activated, so whatever installation of the Python packages that I will do will be limited to this environment only. Now we need to create our Azure function scripts. So uh, first thing first is we will initialize uh, the worker environment. So I'm going to do a function initialization by saying that my worker runtime is set to Python. All right. Uh, so it's going to initialize uh, my Python code. Uh, it has set up my host file and the settings file itself. Now I'll, I'll want the functions to create a new template for me. Uh, so I'm going to give it saying that, okay, function create a new. I, I want to give it a name. I'm still going to use classify. Uh, let's make it something else. Let's make it Eagles. Um, and, you know, my template is going to be that of an HTTP trigger. All right, so because I want to kind of invoke this using an HTTP trigger, I'll kind of make use of this uh, and it's going to dump a bunch of code for me. Now let's go through this code. I'll just explain what just got created in here. Uh, so let me open up the folder. Uh, and your functions, we created it in demo app, and I'm going to select uh, this in here. All right, so so previously you saw that you know when I kind of set it up, uh, you know I'm I have a version 2.0, uh, which is where my Azure function is, uh, and my setup that I did is going to be 3.0. So it really doesn't matter, uh, and something that we can fix it later. Uh, and our function work time environment is Python. Uh, so everything is set up correctly, right? So we don't have uh, any problems in here. Now these two functions were created. So I got my init file itself, uh, which is something that we are going to replace it. Um, and I'll tell you where to kind of get that code from um, in a moment. Uh, but before we kind of do that, the file that we got where we said, hey, you know, it's a bald eagle, label eagle. So I'm going to pick these three files, labels, model, and predict. And I'm going to dump it into uh, my Azure Functions uh, itself. So I have my demo app. Uh, I go into my Eagles, and I'm just going to copy these files in here. All right. So I don't need anything more than this, and I should be good to go. So let's jump back to my Visual Studio Code. And I see my predict file, I have my labels files, and I have my wait files. So we'll kind of go into the init file itself. Now let me give you a bunch of code and I'll kind of explain what this code means. Uh, so let me just do another full screen presentation uh, so you guys can follow. So what you need to do is go to this GitHub code, uh, this gist that I've shared with you, or you can use the bit.ly code. Um, and I'll take a pause at this point while you kind of download this code. Uh, and see if there are any questions uh, that you have or anything that you haven't followed so far. Um, and then uh, um, see if any questions or any doubts that still linger. So I'll take a pause for a couple of minutes uh, to answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, let me know if you're stuck at any point in time. I can go back and you know kind of redo those steps uh, in, in the uh, in the folder itself. So the steps that we did, I've kind of reiterate them in green. Uh, so in case you missed any of them or you are not able to see the fonts, if it was too small, uh, then let me know. I can go back and redo uh, these things. It just takes a couple of minutes anyways.
All right, since there are no questions, uh, let's get back to the code itself. Uh, now, you know, I don't like this code, um, and I'll tell you in a moment what it's there. Uh, so I'm just going to copy the first init file uh, and replace it in here. So what's happening in here is I say that, you know, my main function is going to run, you know, when it re uh, receives an HTTP request, uh, you know, my image URL is sitting in a parameter called IMG, uh, which is a parameter. You can pick whatever parameter you want. Just make sure that it remains uh, consistent. Then I'm going to get my results passing through the predict URL, and the predict URL is in my dot predict function. Uh, sorry, dot predict file. Uh, and if you just scroll down a bit, uh, you are going to see this predict URL. Uh, which is what uh, is going to kind of do it. Now coming back, you know, I'm, I don't have any error handling or anything. You know, I assume that everything is going to be perfect. Uh, and I have my header, which is, you know, I'm going to get a JSON file uh, and allow origin to be from any any source itself. You know, don't do this in production unless you are really, really confident of exposing this to public. Um, so not wouldn't really recommend it. All right, now. That's the change that we do uh, in here, and then essentially I'll convert it into a JSON uh, of the result uh, and return the uh, return the value back as an HTTP response. Now, in my predict uh, in my predict file itself, uh, there are a couple of things that we need to do. So one is, you know, it assumes that this is local, uh, and this is a very dangerous assumption to make, right? Because when the function get activated, you don't know on what path. It has been activated, uh, so the best thing that we are going to do is provide it a default path. Uh, and the way to do it is we are going to kind of explicitly call this out and say that. Uh, let me just explain it here. We are going to explicitly call out and say that okay, I need the path. I need where the script directories are there, uh, and then essentially I'm going to take the file name, find out where the script is running. Uh, and assign an appropriate byte for my file name, uh, which is my model weights, uh, and the labels file name, which is my labels.txt, right? So essentially, this is what I'm replacing uh, back in my code. Uh, so I'm going to not use this. So I'm going to keep the file names the same. So don't change any of these things. If you want to go and rename the file name to be something else, make sure you make the appropriate changes in there. Now I'm just going to move the imports on the top so that I have my imports in a specific file. Uh, now this is what I have uh, in my folder itself. OK. Now once we have set this up, let's go back to the predict URL code, which is in here. Uh, and I need to add a couple of lines in here for me. Um, all it says is that you know I'm going to initialize this uh, so that the initialization happens. Uh, otherwise, you know when your code runs, uh, it has no files, no nothing associated with that. So this this essentially is your key step uh, for for running uh, the file uh, uh, when it uh, when it gets loaded by the function itself. Now this is a point pain point at this point. Uh, in Azure Functions, because this initialization happens every time, uh, which means for every call, it's going to reload uh, the wait file. This is one of the reasons why you see higher response times. Now, if there was a way where this initialization could happen uh, the first time when the function is loaded in memory, uh, this will kind of save uh, a lot of pain points for us. Uh, but unfortunately, this is not possible right now. Uh, and uh, you know that's one of the reasons why we'll do the initialization for every time the predict URL is called for. All right, so once this is done, uh, now let's go back to our command line uh, and we are just going to do uh, a very simple uh, pip install uh, for everything that was there in our requirement files. All right, uh, oh, we didn't fix our requirement file. Uh, let's go back and um, take a look at, you know, what our requirement files uh, needs to be. So, our requirement files again. You know, if you go back to that uh, GitHub page, I have it here for you. 
Uh, so we need Azure Functions. I need NumPy, TensorFlow, Flask, and Pillow. All right, so I'm just going to copy this and, and put it in here. So Azure Functions, NumPy, TensorFlow, Flask, and Pillow. Uh, some of these are obvious. TensorFlow needs NumPy. Um, I'm going to save all of these things. And let's go back and just do a pip install uh, with the requirement files itself. I have a pip install, no cache, uh, just work with the requirement file itself. Now, while this is running, again, you know, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, would be happy to answer it. Uh, we are almost coming towards the end of the deployment itself. Let me know if you guys are facing any problems uh, while this is installing. Let me put up the instructions for doing that again on screen. So if you have missed anything, you should be able to follow with me on this. All right, so it's still um, doing its last steps um, on the installation. Uh, just give it a couple of minutes uh, for it to finish. All right, uh, we are done with this. Um, so now let's do our deployments. Uh, so I'll go to Azure uh, and I'm going to say that, okay, let's deploy it. Um, you know, I have my functions in here. Uh, Eagles is my demo. So I'm going to look at my subscription. Uh, this could be different. I have my Eagles in there. Uh, and then we are just going to do a simple initialization uh, for us in here, All right? So our current version is two, the remote version is three. We are just going to deploy it anyways. Like I said, right, it, there's no material difference between the two, at, at least for what we are doing. Uh, so let's just do a deployment anyways. Now this deployment is going to take some time. Um, uh, and while it's again getting deployed, uh, there is nothing much uh, that we can do. Again, I'll open the floor for any questions, anything that's on your mind that you have not understood or uh, uh, anything that you want to ask associated with either computer uh, custom vision or Azure functions.
All right, there was a ask that um, you want to see how to do the deployment again. Uh, so on the Azure function, you have deploy uh, to function app. Uh, so we are going to do a deploy again. I'll just show you the steps I won't follow through. Uh, click on your subscription. Uh, you know, you necessarily need to have a function app created in Azure, or you can create it directly from here. Since we already created it, I picked the one uh, for which we already created it, uh, which is here. Uh, once it's done, it's going to ask me, should I deploy it anyways? Uh, and once I click OK, it's going to help me with the deployment. I hope, uh, Ashik, that answered your question. So in my Azure app, I went to my function. Now, basically, this is where I kind of modified the name and everything. Uh, looks like it still has the older one. Looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, I didn't save it, so let's do another deploy. Let's go do it. Eagles deploy anyway. Uh, All right, um, I think this time around it should do it faster. Sorry, um, made an error by not saving the file. For those who are getting trouble installing TensorFlow, you can also try TensorFlow 1.140, uh, so that you can essentially add the requirements from uh, the Docker file that you downloaded uh, and just follow from there. 
So TensorFlow below, you can essentially just copy this and paste it in there instead of using TensorFlow 2.0. Either one should 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 be working for you. And let me know again if you face issues with that. All right, so this time around, hopefully I shouldn't have made any mistake. Uh, let's just do a quick refresh. Yep, so now I think my function has been correctly entered. I don't have any issue. Now what we do is on the, this page itself, right? You can get your function URL uh, and this essentially gives you your code uh, for doing that. Now you can copy this and do it uh, wherever you want uh, and pass it a parameter that is suitable for you. Uh, so this is essentially taking a custom vision app and deploying it on Azure function. And as you can see that, hey, you know, we got it done uh, fairly fast uh, without a bunch of issues. Now, you know, working around this, if you have a multi-model, uh, multi-label, um, those are also the models that you can kind of build up here. Uh, it, it's nothing fancy. Uh, once you know what the steps are, uh, you can essentially replicate it for uh, for whatever and however you want to want to kind of deploy. Uh, so that. There it goes. Uh, it's a very simple approach uh, to kind of deploy custom vision models onto Azure Functions. Uh, let me know again if you have any questions, any doubts, uh, but this essentially should help you get started uh, on uh, deploying your own functions uh, using custom vision for your computer vision applications. Do you guys have any questions? Anything else you want to know on this? Hey, as promised, uh, you know, for those who are following with me, uh, you know, in your live Q and A, can you send me your email address? Uh, I will share with you uh, the license for JetBrains, and you can use it for any of the tool uh, that JetBrains offer. And this license is essentially valid for uh, one year, so which is a pretty good deal. So just ping me your email addresses, and I will forward you. Uh, a redemption certificate for one year of uh, PyCharm license.
So I thought I'll just show you another thing. So I just copied um, the API that I had. I gave an image, which is essentially, if you see it, it's of a golden eagle, uh, which is sitting on a rock. Uh, and then I can essentially send a request. Uh, sorry, 404 not found. Okay, because I replaced this. Function URL, make sure I copied it correctly. All right, so there you go. So I'm able to pass a parameter to it and get a response um, from the Azure function module itself. So that's that's a easy way of taking a computer vision model uh, that you trained with your own data set and deploy it on Azure functions. Uh, super powerful. I, I love this approach. We use it on a production module. Um, and yeah, I mean, hope you learned something new today. Uh, I think that's all I'll have for today. I'll keep the channel open for a few more minutes. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, any doubts, uh, and don't forget to send me your email address. Uh, post it on live Q&A. I won't publish that thing, but I'll certainly send you a license, a JetBrains license that you can use for one tool. All right. Thank you all for those who joined. Uh, I hope it was fun. I'll share this presentation on the on the meetup forum itself uh, and then uh, maybe you can follow it from there again you know any questions feel free to dump it on the meetup portal after the session is over uh, would be happy to answer uh, some of them All right, uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Uh, it was a real pleasure to again walk you through uh, custom vision and Azure functions and how they play together. Uh, again, if you haven't forgotten, uh, make sure to send me your email addresses. I will send you a license uh, for JetBrains. All right, uh, have a good evening and stay safe uh, in this environment. See ya.